for your goodness. We thank you, oh God, that you have looked beyond our faults and you saw our need of you. And Lord, we confess, oh God, that we need you. Every hour, oh God, we need you. Come, Holy Spirit. Continue to minister in this house. And Lord, prepare us to be a sanctuary. Pure and holy. Tried and true. And Lord, with thanksgiving, we'll be a living sanctuary. For you, Lord, take the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart. Make them acceptable in your sight. For Lord, you are my strength and my redeemer. Yes, ask this in the wonderful, matchless, excellent name of Jesus. Amen. Every grateful heart said amen. amen. Come on, clap your hands and give God praise in the house. Go oh, clap your hands, all you people. Come on, clap your hands, all you people. And then shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Come on, shout unto God with the voice of triumph. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. Hallelujah. And I was just glad when they said unto me, get yourself up and go to the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. So we enter into his gates with thanksgiving. We enter into his courts with praise. We're thankful unto him. And because we're thankful, we bless his name. Anybody else come to bless his name in the house? Oh, come on here. Y'all too quiet in the new grace. I said, anybody else come to bless the name of the Lord? Amen. Yeah. We've kind of uh, deviated from the order of service. But how do you know, amen, that the Spirit of the Lord uh, is always free, amen, to express himself? Amen. Because where his spirit is, there is a liberty, amen? Hallelujah. So we're grateful and thankful to be in the house of the Lord today. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Have you know that his word is a light to your feet? Amen. It's a lamp to your pathway. Amen. We're grateful. Amen. That we can hide God's word in our heart that we might not sin against thee. Amen. We're so grateful to be here today. If you have your Bibles, we're going to go directly to the word of God. Amen. Read this from uh, the message Bible. It's going to read slightly different if you have the King James and another version. I'm going to ask you just to follow along with me. Amen. As we read uh, from the Holy Word. If I speak with human eloquence and angelic ecstasy but don't love, I'm nothing but the creaking of a rusty gate. If I speak God's word with power, revealing all his mysteries and making everything plain as day, and if I have faith that says to a mountain, move or jump, and it jumps, but I don't love, I'm nothing. Verse 3, if I give everything I own to the poor and even go to the stake to be burned as a martyr, but I don't love, I've gotten nowhere. So no matter what I say, what I believe and what I do, I'm bankrupt without love. Love never gives up. Love cares more for others than for self. Love doesn't want what it doesn't have. Love doesn't strut, doesn't have a swelled head. Verse 5, doesn't force itself on others, isn't always me first. Doesn't fly off the handle, doesn't keep score of the sins of others. Doesn't revel when others grovel. Takes pleasure in the flowering of truth. Verse 7. Puts up with anything. Trust God always. Always look for the best. Never looks back but keeps going to the end. Because love never dies. Inspired speech will be over someday. Praying in tongues will end. Understanding will reach its limit. We know only a portion of the truth. And what we say about God is always incomplete. Verse 10, but when the complete arrives, our incomplete will be canceled. When I was an infant at my mother's breast, I gurgled and cooled like an infant. But when I grew up, I left those infant ways for good. 
Because we don't yet see things clearly. We were squinting in a fall, peering through a mist. But we won't be long, but it won't be long before the weather clears and the sun shines bright. We'll see it all then, see it all as clearly as God sees us, knowing him directly just as he knows us. 13, but for right now, somebody say right now. Until that completeness, we have three things to do to lead us toward that consummation. Trust steadily in God. Hope unswervingly. Love extravagantly. And the best of the three is love. Amen. You can be seated. Amen. In the presence of the Lord. First Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13 from the King James says, And now abideth faith. Hope, charity, Amen. these three. But the greatest of these is charity. For just a few moments, I want to, amen, minister from this thought. Love, TKO. Love, TKO. And I must give a disclosure today. Um... I must admit that in my 50 years of living, uh, I assumed the incorrect meaning to the lyrics of Love, TKO Rose. I, 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 I must admit, um, I always assumed and thought that when I would occasionally hear uh, that song on, on uh, the radio that uh, was originally uh, written by Cecil Womack and Gip Noble, uh, but mainly associated with R&B and so artists, Teddy Pentagrams. Mm -hmm. Upon listening to the song, I would foolishly think that Teddy P was singing about a love that would really be a total knockout. I had no idea up to just a few weeks ago uh, what TKO really stood for. I was like, Lord, how mercy. How foolish am I to think that uh, in the song he said, looking back over my years, I guess I shed some tears. Told myself time and time again, this time I'm going to win. But another fight, things ain't right. I'm losing, I'm losing again. Takes a fool to lose twice and start all over again. Tried to take control of the love, but this love took control of me. Because you lose all thoughts, sense of time, and have a change of mind. So I think I better let it go. Mm, now why y'all sitting up back like that on another song? Huh? Why y'all sitting up there? What you say about it? Looks like another love? No, right? No, I got a few people in here that can testify. Love took control of Love took control. And if we would be honest and real with ourselves and just really keep it 100 today, many can relate to the lyrics uh, in this song as it describes our current situation, uh, not with a spouse, not with a lover, not with a significant other, but in our relationship with God. Yes. Mm -hmm. So many have, listen, let him go. So many today have let God go and embrace the love of idols and embrace the love of things and trinkets, the love of money and so many other things that distract our attention and our affection toward him. So many folks today are flocking and have flocked to church today and they're having church but not knowing and loving God. So many today, saints of God, are playing church and not taking God seriously. They have a love TKO, which means they are guided and they are controlled by their carnality. Mm -hmm. Their infatuation and love of the world. My God, you understand the word of God declares, amen, that we're not to love the world. Amen. Look at what the word of God says in 1 John. He said, my little children, I write unto you uh, that ye sin not. And if any man sin, you have an advocate with the Father. He said, I write unto you. Uh, he said in verse 15 of 1 John, uh, he said, love not the world, 
neither the things that are in the world. Mm -hmm. If any man love the world, the love, listen, the love of God is not in him. Well, what's in the word, preacher? What's in the world, preacher? Verse 15, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life uh, is not of the Father, but is of the world. Mm. He said you got to stop loving evil. Y'all was shouting just a minute ago. Because in our society today, the greatest desire, well, man, uh, is not to be wealthy. A lot of people aspire to want more, but that's not the greatest desire. In our society today, the greatest desire is not to be famous. I know uh, we put people on pedestals and, and, and we uh, long to be famous. Uh, it's not to be popular. It's not to be happy. It's not to be successful as much as people gravitate to that. The greatest longing and desire in this world is simply to be loved. Because years ago, uh, someone popularized a song that says what we really need it's not popularity, not more money, man, not success, not fame, but what the world needs is love. Mm -hmm. Because so many are existing without the knowledge of God, without knowing that he loves them, my God, and not only that he loves them, listen, but God loves you and I with an everlasting love. His love is not conditional. Jeremiah 31 says, The Lord hath appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. Uh, how many of you can uh, ex uh, testify and express, amen, that when you went to thinking about him, his loving kindness drew you. You weren't trying to live for him, but you experienced a love, TKO. His love took control of you. Thank you, Lord. He said, with loving kindness, how I drew you, my God. Oh, yes, yeah, so most of you know that in just a few days, in just a few days, thousands of cards and it's uh, IMs and text messages and social media posts and roses and sweet chocolates and a plethora of other goodies uh, will be exchanged to express uh, our love to some significant other. Mm -hmm. uh, but I must submit to you today uh, that a true spirit led and spirit filled believer never has to wait until February the 14th to express your love, my God, to God or to anyone else for that matter. Come on here, somebody. Jesus commands us in John chapter 13, a new commandment I give unto you that ye love one another. Mm -hmm. As I have loved you. That she also uh, love because Jesus said, because I love you, you're able to love one another. He said, by this, mm, by this, not by coming to church, not how much you know how to praise God. Oh, that's wonderful. Amen. He's a spirit and we should worship him in spirit and in truth. But this is the indicator, Jesus says, by this shall all men know. That you follow me and that you're my disciples. It's by the love that you have for one another. Yes, so that one quality that should characterize all true believers is not that we look the part, but it's characterized by the love, amen, that we have. Yes. And then the one aspect that should distinguish. My God, uh, the saved from the unsaved. Uh -huh. That one thing, my God, that should distinguish the righteous from the unrighteous. The redeemed from the unredeemed. The converted from the unconverted is this quality of love. 
He said, and now abide these three. Faith, you got to have it because you can't please him without it. He said, he that cometh to me must believe that I am and I'm a rewarder of those that diligently seek me. So while you're seeking me and while you have hope, because hope maketh not a shame. Come on here, somebody. It was this love, though, that lifted me. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason why, my God, uh, the Bible declares, amen, that he is love. Uh, later on in 1 John chapter 4, he says in verse 8, he that loves not, you don't really know God. He that loves not knows not God because God is love. He says in verse John 4, 9, and this was manifested, the love of God toward us because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live, somebody say live, that I might live through him. Herein, herein is love, he says, not that we love God. Come on here, let's be honest. Let's keep it real. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation, to be the sacrifice, to be the atonement, my God, to be the salvation, to be the redemption for our sins. That's the reason why. Every time, every opportunity that you and I get to come into a collective uh, body, amen, a collective worship opportunity, you and I should never be pumped and primed to give God praise. Because when you realize that when I was deep sinking in my sin, God loved me. When you know and understand that he's loved, it simply means that you uh, confess and testify that he's true. When you're talking about God is love, you're simply saying, my God, that you're genuine. Ain't nothing false about you. Ain't nothing plastic about you. You're dependable, God. When I say that you're love, I'm simply saying and testifying that you're trustworthy, that you're effective, that you're faithful, that you've been sincere, that you're honest, that you're unique, that you can change everything that comes in contact with your love. And you can testify and relate here today that when you really know, when you really know the love of God, amen, his love can transform your life. Oh, yes, it can. It can take your bitterness and make it sweet. When you really know God's love, man, he can take your wretched jack up life and turn it upside right. Uh, I don't care if you're in here today, if you've been broken. My God, if you've been abused. My God, if you know and understand his love, his love that's TKO, his love that has taken control of you, there's no way that you and I can remain the same. Oh yes, no way, because when you know the love of God, uh, it can take your dull routine. Oh yes, it can, and make, my God, your life worth living. When you know his love, it can take your ugliness and transform it into something beautiful. When you understand and know, my God, that the greatest of these is love, it can take, my God, your burdens and make your burdens light. When you know that the greatest of these is love, it can take, my God, the past and make it good. So what is love, TKO Pastor? It's considerate. It's considerate. It cares about how others feel. It knows when others hurt. It supplies when others need. The greatest of these, it reaches to what others are. It encourages those that are faint. It will strengthen those that are weak. It will inspire those who are discouraged. If you came in here today with your head hung down, I'm here to confess that 
and he is the glory and the lifter up of your heads. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the king, 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 and the king of glory. He shall, he are coming, oh yes, his love takes control. I don't care how stony your heart is. I know you encountered some folks who turned their heart and hardened their heart toward him. But his love, hallelujah, is able, hallelujah, to penetrate the hardness and the coldness of individuals' hearts. He's able, my God, to heal every heartache. He's able, my God, to endure every temptation. And let me say this. I'm almost done. Mm -hmm. With all the hate and all the evil that's going around from the White House to the Senate, you got folks fussing and fighting over what transpired this past week. People are talking about huh, what he's justified. He never should have been uh, put before uh, 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 impeachment proceedings. So you got folks hating. Uh, 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 so-called uh, Make America Great supporters. Uh, you got folks hating my God from uh, you got from uh, uh, from the hateful and, and, and lost uh, 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 LGBTQ. Uh, they got some more letters added to it now. Ron Stanley. I A. We 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 just now got used to saying LGBTQ. Now they added I A to it. Lesbians, bisexual. Gay, transgender, queer are questioning intersex and a sexual are light. What in the world is a sexual? But you got these people in our society, amen, that are uh, promoting hatefulness and promoting evil. My God, a side note, Dr. Michael Brown stated on Twitter, and I quote, he said, call me homophobic, uh, uh, bigot if you want to, but I'll say it anyway. Choosing an out and proud married gay man to run for president, let alone become president, will contribute to the future gener uh, the generation and more confusion of our society, along with further attacks on our most fundamental rights. If there ever was a time that you and I need to walk in discernment, that time is now. If there ever was a time that you and I need to embrace his love as a TKO, that time is now. He said, because we're in the last days, he said, you and I have to walk in wisdom toward those without redeeming the time. Why? Because the day... <clears throat> because there's no better time. We got folks fussing and fighting about what Gail King says. Who cares what Gail King says? She's doing her job. That's what they do. She get paid to do. And you got you you wasting your time going on social media responding to that foolishness. The word of God says, "Avoid, stop, my God, the agenda strife." As a believer, sometimes you gotta be, you gotta know how to be slow to speak, right. slow to rap. Yeah. I'm talking about love TKO. Yeah. He said, follow peace with all me. Yeah. And holiness. Yeah. Somebody say holy. Holiness. Ah. Thank you, Jesus. So you and I, there's no better time then we are to be guided and then by this love to heal. Matter of fact, every household, every home, every marriage needs to be guided and transformed and inspired and saturated by his love. Oh, yes, we do. There's no marriage that love cannot strengthen. Let me park right here for a second. There's no relationship, a man uh, between uh, 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 husband and wife spouses, amen, that God cannot, amen, strengthen. Amen? 
Don't you let the enemy come between you and your spouse. Don't you do it. Amen. What God has joined together. You know what the word of God says. Mm -hmm. But listen, let me tell you what's going on. And I'm going to be done. Give me about three minutes and I'm out there. The Bible says in Matthew 24, and because iniquity, because iniquity shall abound. What this simply means is because there's been an increase of wickedness, because it has increased, because wickedness has increased, listen, the love of many has waxed cold. I mean, it's grown cold. Man, just uh, yesterday, they said somebody uh, walked up into Waffle House on Fern Valley Road and had the nerve enough to get mad because the tables wasn't clean to their expectation and start throwing stuff all over Waffle House. People are crazy and cuckoo. But it's because, amen, th their, their love has waxed cold. You know good word, you don't go up in a Waffle House like you're going into a five-star restaurant. Come on, get your crazy stuff together. And the people responded and said, you know what? I should have carried my peace with me. This is, this is the society that we're living in today. They said, you know, we, we, got, and we got up out of there because we didn't know what this man was going to do. He said, uh, uh, the, the, the people who responded said, this, this old man's daughters uh, left the restaurant. Because they was terrified of their own father. Because he was in there just going off. Calling, calling people uh, uh, out, out of their name. Now these, these were folks that don't look like you or not. This, this, this is the white folks in, in Waffle House. Scared of this man because he didn't walk in there. And they say he had his hand in his pocket the whole time. As if there was a weapon. As if he was going to do something. But once again. And because iniquity, wickedness shall abound, yeah. the love of many has grown cold. Yeah. So you and I must understand, amen, that you've got to cover your house yeah. every day with the blood of Jesus. Yeah. Every day that you wake up, you need to declare Jesus over your family. Y'all don't hear me. That's the reason why, my God, amen, uh, uh, our society today has, has grown cold, amen, toward uh, the nucleus family. That's the reason why, my God, uh, 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 we can seemingly go for days, weeks, and months, even years without communicating and expressing our love to one another. Man, I, I thought about that. Uh, I know it's been a few weeks now that, that since the tragic accident that took place uh, in California, just a couple weeks ago, we left church and got the, the horrible news that there had been a tragic helicopter crash. And so those uh, nine individuals and their, the, those families that were associated, their lives changed forever. That's how quick your situation can change. And unfortunately, the sad part is, uh, if in those families, I'm not saying it was, but if in those families they had gone for possibly, maybe seemingly days, weeks, months, or even years without speaking to one. Don't you realize that folks today, blood relatives, going for months without talking to people, hung up over stupid stuff. You didn't gave birth to your own child and you ain't spoke to them in months. You crazy, go repent. You talking about you love God. You worship him and spread it to me. You ain't spoke to your flesh and blood. Something is wrong. If you can go for months and months at a time and y'all hung up over stuff and folks are leaving out of here unexpectedly without announcement and reservation. So it behooves you and I to make sure, amen, that we get our business fixed. And then that we get our house in order because we're living in the last days and unbeknown to many of us, it's later than we think. So I submit to you that too many folks today are living life without knowing this true love and how this love comes, my God, from Jesus Christ. Uh-huh. First John 4, once again, 9 says, and 
this was manifested. It was expressed the love of God toward us that God sent his only son. He loved you us enough so that he sent his best. He gave his best for you and I. When we were at our worst, God gave his best for the forgiveness of our sins. And how many know that his love can do what nothing else can do? I said God's love can do what nothing else can do. Because if given the chance, God's love, if we allow it, it can settle so many differences in our society. If we give God's love a chance, God can take your jacked up situation and turn your situation around. If you give God's love a chance, I wonder if there's somebody here today that would accept this love TKO. That this love can solve whatever problem that you may be dealing with. This love, my God, can prevent a lot of frustrations that people are dealing with today. This love, if given a chance, would stop so many folks, married couples, from separating and getting divorced. God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think or even imagine but it takes a willingness from you and I to submit to his love to submit God to his love if you give his love an opportunity and lose your pride that's what it is a lot of us need to humble ourselves and quit walking in pride and a lot of jealousy and tension and selfishness. How in the world are you going to come in his house as good as he's been to you and sit there like a gator by the lake? Don't you realize that God has expressed and manifest his love to you when nothing else could help. His love lifted you when you wasn't thinking about him. He was thinking about you in your aloofness, in your pride. God took you up, turned your life around, set you on straight street. And how dare any of us come in his house and not give him what is due. Come on, somebody, and bow. About it, faith, hope, charity, these three. But the greatest, the greatest of these is charity. God, Father, we thank you. What our hearts have received, what our ears have heard. Father, I pray that in the name of Jesus, Lord, that we would not be forgetful hearers, but make us doers of your holy word. God, I pray right now, God, whatever mountain we may be dealing with, what is the man of God had mentioned, God, we pray, God, by your word, God, that we uh, will continue not to just to move around the mountain, that we will speak to that mountain and cause it to be removed in the name of Jesus. We thank you, oh God, for what you're doing in this ministry, what you're doing, oh God, in the life of your people. God, we realize that nothing happens by happenstance. Nothing just happens. So, Father, we pray, oh God, you continue to lead us and to guide us. We pray, God, to bless us upon the food and the fellowship of the Lord. Now, we thank you, oh God, for those who prepare it and those who labor. We thank you, Lord, that our labor is not in vain in the Lord. And God, as we leave this place and we go back to our home, Father, we pray that we will find things better than they were before we left. Amen. So we speak the blessing of the Lord upon your people. We pray, oh God, in the name of Jesus, this will be the best week Lord, that we've ever had this year. We speak blessings upon your people. God, we pray, God, that we will walk with God in favor with you and with me. And we'll be careful to give you the praise, the honor, and all the glory for it belongs to you. In Jesus' name, every grateful heart said amen. amen. We love you.